Omega CQ Mobility is a part of the Anglian Omega Network, which is present in six countries. They have offices in Faridabad, Chennai, and they have released electric cargo loaders and passenger three wheelers in the Indian market. They have also planning to release very soon India's first electric four wheel small commercial vehicle M1KA, also known as the Desi Cyber Truck by the Indian EV community. A massive 90 kilowatt hours NMC battery pack and an electric motor with a peak torque of 347 Newton meters. M1KA will run up to 250 kilometers on a single charge. Specifications look fantastic, and today we will be speaking to Sri Uday Naran, who is the founder and the chairman of Omega CQ Mobility, about the M1KA. Uday ji, welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much. Good afternoon from uh, Dubai. I'm at my uh, Middle Eastern headquarters today, but great to see from you, hear from you. And yes, uh, we are really excited about uh, our India's first LCV, M1KA. Can you tell us about the product development and the R&D which has gone into designing and developing the M1K and how much of it is made in India? Sure, we, um, you know, we have been working on M1K for the last couple of years. Our R&D teams have been working on developing, you know, right from when we were doing Rage Plus, we had a vision for India's, you know, first LCV. Uh, so it's been over three or four years. We've almost four years where this has been in the works. Uh, you know, we've been working on the design. We're working with a group of very, um, you know, advanced uh, Italian designers uh, that work in Milan on many, many major products like Lamborghini, uh, you know, Landwar, uh, you know uh, Jaguar Land Rover, and many of the larger companies. Um, this has been a product that, uh, you know, we believe is going to change uh, the dynamics of uh, LCVs in this country. Uh, it is something that, you know, we have had a lot of, um, you know, teams, whether they were national, international, and has been led by our R&D teams here in India. But again, uh, you know, in very, very different parts of the world, we have taken, uh, you know, alliances on building uh, M1KA. Right, but the production or manufacturing is going to happen primarily in India, Udeji? Yeah, let me answer that question you asked about. Uh, this is going to be a... 99% make in India product. All the production will be here. Uh, we are going to align. We have had a clear philosophy right from the beginning of make in India. Obviously, make in India, Atmanirbhar India, uh, vocal for local has all come in in the pandemic. But we had always had that vision that OSM would be India's, um, you know, premier company that was building all of the vehicles all of the parts. We have an automotive parts background. We are the largest steel processor in this country. Um, you know, we have a history of uh, in the automotive line. So we built, we wanted to build all the products here. And to answer your question, yes, all of this will be built in India. And we believe that a large part of, I would say close to 90, 90, 99% of these uh, products will be made here uh, in India. Right. So, so just just some kind of uh, you know, uh, in terms of sub, uh, what should I say? How production ready is it in terms of certifications and all that? And what kind of launch date are we looking at? So we are working. Look, we are going to take it into um, you know we're deciding whether we take it into ICAT or ARAI. We are we believe that the first you know group of vehicles that we're going to be out for uh, customer you know basically e-commerce will be. Uh, later this year, early next year, maybe February of next year, and the production uh, should be August of September of next year. The facility will be put in, we've decided in Karnataka, uh, we are going to be putting uh, our plant there. Uh, you know, it has, an, it has a great significant uh, ecosystem. We have got all the big boys, we've got, you know, all our Aether, Simple Energy, and the government has done a great job, the state government has done a great job in building an ecosystem. So that's where we're going to produce this. Uh, we're going to fast track, you know, everything we do, we are doing on a fast track. You saw we came out with three wheelers. We came up with multiple type of cargo, cold. Um, you know, we've come up with garbage. Uh, we come out with two wheelers in about uh, 10 days. That's going to be before, uh, right after, Navra you know, right after Navratri start. Uh, so, you know, four wheelers again. So I think you're going to see more and more of this vehicle next year. 
and where in Karnataka is this Hosur, the the area where you are going to be putting we, up the we, we, we have, we, We're in the final stages of it, but yes, somewhere close by. Yes, but we haven't finalized it. We are in the finalization process right now. Okay, okay, lovely. So, uh, what kind of customers are you targeting with this? Is it construction site or the farm sector or the construction, you know, builder builders community, or is it the individuals like you know the pickup is a kind of a very strong culture in the West? Are you trying to get that into India with this vehicle? Well, look, we we you know we think global, we act local. We're not going to try to force the global mentality here in India. Uh, we are going to start with we've got a fantastic response from all the e-commerce companies. They are crying out for a product like this. You have to understand uh, the LCB. Uh, sit across on the city borders for most of the hours on a no entry, and then at night there's a mad scramble to deliver vehicle, you know, to get vehicles in. There's a wastage of vehicle time. There's a wastage of efficiency. Uh, the truck drivers, the assistants are just sitting around at the borders all day long, uh, just for a few hours. Um, so this is going to change the way mobility is done. And for us at OSM, it's extremely important that we are looking to find solution to problems and we are a mobility you know, solutions provider, not just we look at ourselves at an OEM. So, you know, I think, you know, this is something where a lot of the OEMs have really looked into us and have reached out to us to give this product, uh, you know, whether it be in the, uh, you know, the e-commerce sector, whether it be in the food sector, whether it be in the pharma sector, whether it be in the auto sector. So very different areas. And once we prove the concept to all the large e-commerce companies. We will take it to individuals. We have been responded a lot by individual players, but we will do this initially uh, in a 2,000 lot, um, you know, initial. We will make sure that it gets worked on the last miles of this country and the drivers that drive in the last mile put it under a very, very rigorous condition. Once that proves to be good, we'll pull it out to uh, individuals also. But we have been reached out by a lot of individuals, but initially we'll focus on the uh, you know, the, com the e-commerce companies, the food companies, the pharma companies in a larger lot. Right. So it's mostly intercity kind of um, uh, transport we that gonna, we are looking at. We are also working okay. on intra-city. Uh, you know, there's some things we are working with. Um, you know, we have a very close alliance with a company called Log9. I think you know of them. Uh, they've been around for quite some time. Uh, Akshay there. Um, you know, CEO is, a, is an, 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 a founder, is an amazing person. We really like them. We've done an alliance with them on our three wheelers. We are working on them where, you know, from Delhi to Jaipur or other cities where, where you know, they'll do 125 kilometers on a single charge. And then, you know, for 30 minutes in, you know, in a Taba or a Chai station or whatever, wherever the driver wants to hold, we believe, you know, there's central locations in, um, you know, these areas, and I'm just talking about the north, but it could be south, could be the west, could be the east. We will put up those fast charging and it will give the initial. See, the thing is we want to be very careful about the cost. So if we put a very heavy battery, the cost will be very high. India is a very, very price sensitive market. So we, will, you know, we think that, you know, we, the, we, we will give people choices, 250 kilometers, or they can do a 150 on a fast charge, 130, 140 on a fast charge, and in 30 minutes, they get another 150, right? So it's different, different horses for different courses. We will provide those customers different choices. Uh, so we are, we are, we are evaluating different things, but I think it's going to be a combination of fixed and then it's going to be fast charging. And fast charging, we really, really are fans of uh, Log9 and the work that they do. And they're doing some amazing work with us in the three wheelers. So that's what we're going to go. So you must be looking at something like a 60 kilowatt plus fast charger because the battery itself is 90 kWh. So it can't be a slow, you know, anything less than 60 kW. No, see, the advantage of, 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 of Log9 is he gives me a 40 kilowatt battery, which is lower cost, and he gives me a fast charger. So the battery does. So we look at a different option. We can do a 90 kilo, you know, kilowatt, or we can do a lesser battery. And it does, 100, as I said, 125, 130 kilo, you know, kilometers. And then in 30 minutes, right. less than 30 minutes, they get a charge. And people, those drivers will stop at, you know, for a tea or a taba or a lunch or a dinner or to stretch their legs out or go to the bathroom. So I think we will find a solution for that 250 and more. And that will give us intrusivity also. Okay. So, so coming to the two, this uh, 90 kWh battery pack, which is kind of going to give the 250 kilometers range. So, uh, is that with full load, and is that in the ARI conditions, or what? What? What kind of? What about the real life range? What is the expectation on that? Very good question. Very good question, and you're absolutely right. No, we we think that we'll give two 250 in a fully loaded condition. 
um, we want to, it's not just ARI or ICAD listed. We want to make sure, and that's why I told you, we want to test these vehicles with the, with the e-commerce companies, with the last mile players in tough conditions, whether it be, again, whether it be e-commerce, whether it be food, whether it be pharma, you know, very different areas of operation, hard conditions, hard roads, and very sort of difficult terrains. As you know, India is not a, you know, when we say we want to compare it to the US, you know, those guys where Tesla runs, it's a smooth road. I mean, come and go to the road, go to the, you know, the roads of Faridabad or Chennai or certain parts of India, you know, all over India, UP, you will see that's a completely different ball game. So no, I think the answer is we want to give 250. We want to give that range anxiety out of the mind. We want to give a product that is able to change the face of mobility in India. And this product is very well demanded in ASEAN. Uh, we're going to put this product in Africa and Latin America. You know, I have very much global aspirations. OSM is, I, I've made this comment before, we're looking to build the Tesla of the cargo of the East. And I continue to say that we will work towards it. So one of the, in the, in the Indian market, one of the products in the same category is a very successful product called the Mahindra Bolero. And, uh, you know, I've seen a lot of the Boleros up in the hills, mostly. It's a very popular vehicle in the sub Himalayan regions, even in Maharashtra for that matter. So uh, one of the problems with hilly terrain is that it really sucks up your range, you know, battery life kind of reduces. So what kind of drop would one expect if we ended up using your vehicle in, say, uh, the Shimla circuit or somewhere in Himachal or something like that? So we, we've tested this vehicle quite extensively across India. We continually will, um, you know, improve it uh, for all the terrains. Uh, we have found that, you know, we've been quite successful. We're working with battery providers, we're working with powertrain players, we're working with everybody right now to further enhance. And you're absolutely right. Once we make a success completely in those regions, then we will be able to completely uh, bring everybody into the electric revolution. This is a marathon. This is not a sprint. Uh, I told you, you've been in the game long enough. You understand. It takes time. We, for us at OSM, it's continuously working on building products that all the customers at different terrains need. Uh, this will be, again, a work in progress. We will test it. We will work in the Northeast. I was just a few weeks ago in Manipur. You know, the hilly terrains of Manipur is also something that, you know, we're testing our three-wheelers right now. So I think this will be a continuous work in progress, and we will be working on this for a better solution. Okay. Uh, one or two very quick questions about vehicle statistics. One, I'd like to know what's the curve weight, which is the empty weight of the vehicle with the 90 kWh battery. And second is what kind of top speed can we expect from this vehicle, uh, vehicle Look, when it is fully uh, loaded? Yeah, in terms of top speed, we're doing 100 kilometers, you know, in a top speed, uh, fully loaded condition. We want to do that because that is something that we feel, um, you know, we're not going to give you an American you know, zero to 100, you know, zero to 60 in 10 seconds and all of that. I don't think you need that in India. In India, you don't, you don't need that because obviously, I don't know where you're going to go in that. The traffic conditions are quite, uh, you know, as, as we all know. Uh, so I'm not going to try to, bring, uh, you know, revan or, 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 you know, some of the American vehicles. That's, I saw, you know, that that's a different market uh, and that's a different price market. You know, I told you, you really, really need to understand. And you know this, that India is so price sensitive. So we have to be so careful on, you know, we want to give quality. We want to give power. We want to give range. But we also know people's pocketbooks or people's spending power is very, very limited in terms of that. So we will, you know, we will define, we will make products according to also the budget. Okay, so you, you kind of uh, not talk about the weight and, and once you once I finish with that, there's one more related thing which I'll kind of, you know, so what kind of weight so does the vehicle have? The weight, we believe, we believe that it can do two ton, as we discussed, you know, and, you know, the re, you know, if, if you're asking about, you know, um, you know, the, 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 we believe that vehicle, you know, uh, with, with fully loaded should be able to, you know, with the battery and everything, I think, you know, uh, between one and a half and two tons. I think that's something that we believe we should be able to deliver. If that if that is your question, that's I hope right. I'm... I'm yeah, uh, that, that, yeah. That, that, is, that is the question. Right. Uh, now, uh, you know, staying on pricing, uh, there was a product 
launched by Mahindra in the electric space called the E Supro, and that also went beyond a pricing over 12, 13 lakhs. Of course, the range was not as high as uh, it, it didn't have a 90 kWh battery for sure. But uh, you know, when I was talking to the Mahindra team, uh, they shared with me that one of the biggest failures was, like you rightly said, Udayji, the price point. People were not ready to pay a 10 plus lakh price, uh, you know. Whereas the three wheelers, you got almost price parity. You know, three lakhs, three and a half lakhs is what you get for an EV, versus what you get for a, a, a CNG or a diesel kind of a vehicle. So, so uh, what kind of you know, you know, uh, you know, when you said options that you are giving, right? Uh, the pricing, I believe, is, is with a 90 kW battery cannot be cheap. Right. So, how how is the mathematics going to work out over here? What's there in your mind? See, my mind is saying uh, that that you know the 90 kilowatt, you know the the 90 kh is obviously you know the price said the price is going to be for the range. Now, um, you know this might be used in the last mile because they're they're working on a monthly uh, leasing model, right? We're working on that. But the key point right now for you to understand is that that's why I said. Log nine can give you a 30 or 40 kilowatt battery, which the cost will change significantly, and that can be fast charged. Now we are working with log nine on leasing the batteries, so the batteries can be leased. The cost of the vehicle really goes down. So there are multiple areas where we are working on reducing prices. If we, which we believe, we'll be able to give the batteries on lease with log nine. If we could do that. I think the pricing question will continue to go. Again, if you want 250 kilometers, you'll have to pay for it. it nobody can give you three, four, five hundred. I mean, revamp prices gives you, you know, it's close to a hundred thousand dollars, which is seventy lakhs. So I think we've got to be really clear about, and I think customer not customer education, uh, giving customers uh, the, the clarity on what the vehicles can do. So I think for us, the log line solution is a cheaper solution, is a more effective solution. But then again, we're willing to even right now, for example, in our three wheelers, we give you fix, we give you swap, we give you fast charging. You know, we're talking about NMC batteries. We believe that's the right direction. So you know, there's there's all sorts of combinations in India. There's never going to be a specific product or a specific you know battery. It's going to be different courses for different horses, and we think that, that is where you're going to be able to satisfy and and make. Um, the electric revolution successful when more people accept the electric vehicles and how you make them customize. OSM is not, you know, um, you're always seeing suits and I'm, you know, I'm always wearing suits. I'm a custom tailored suit guy. I don't pick up clothes from the rack and I just say, okay. So OSM is about building you a solution for your problem. So you know, it will it will differ. Different batteries, different, um, you know, load capacity, different colors. You know, we'll be able to change that according to customer needs and cost. Obviously, the most important part. So, so, so you did mention that you're going to go exclusively with NCM or AMC uh, chemistry. Now, sure. uh, see, the, the market is split between NMC and LFP, right? Sure. So, I just want to understand the rationale as to going in with uh, NCM versus LFP. What was the kind of thing that you evaluated when you took this decision? See, see, when we tested the vehicle, when we looked at this, when we looked at efficiency, we as a company made a decision that we were getting the better bang for the buck, the better quality, the better longevity, everything that we wanted to do. The NFC, um, you know, batteries was something that we felt, you know, uh, was something that we felt the product was doing much better. We looked at the other side too, but uh, you know, with what we wanted to do. And the product that we had, and the market that we looked at, we preferred that. And you know, there could be multiple reasons. Uh, again, people might this. This is an argument which we can, you know, people will have different viewpoints on. For us, at our product, with what we saw, again, we want to see how the costing can be done. Um, but but again, I am open to, as I told you, you know, we did NMC batteries, but then we had extensive conversations with Log Nine. And our creative team came up. Why don't we use this? So they're developing a battery for us. Hopefully by December, they will give us a battery that can do 130 clicks. And they said, you know, I'm saying, can you bring that kilowatt hour down to maybe 30? So the cost even goes down further. And that see for me, um, Atulji is how do I bring cost? 
I give them the range and I give them that fast charging capability so that, you know, people stop a 15, 20 minute, 30 minute stop to give you that extended range. It doesn't hurt because the drivers will stop anyway. It's in our DNA, right? So it's a bit different than the European and the American drivers that we got here. Fair enough. So, so you're not thinking about LFP in the future. That's something that you could look at depending on how it plays out. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, all, all one absolutely. thing. One thing. Okay. Uh, one thing which uh, you know again is a kind of a vehicle design issue. Uh, you've chosen going for a leaf spring suspension in the front. Now the pickup market is kind of equally divided between uh, front coil springs versus front leaf springs. So. Uh, any particular thing because, you know, in terms of battery range or, you know, vehicle range or etc. Did you find any difference between a leaf spring versus a coil spring? So some some kind of yes. thinking about what behind went behind that decision. Absolutely. In our testing, the leaf spring, you know, we we felt that the product, we, we've tried everything. Believe you me, Atulji, we try, you know, with the leaf spring, the front suspension, we do everything, right? All our guys are working on this. We felt that the better efficiency, the better mileage, the better longevity of the vehicle. This was the best option for us to go. I mean, we talked about 15% regen, you know, um, you know, setting on that. too. So I think, you know, we, when we looked at the product, we felt what would be the best product for the Indian roads? What would be? And so we continually looked at different options. This is what M1K gave us. Again, it doesn't change our mindset. That in the future, if this was not giving us what we want, which we believe we do, but we're open to it, and we're coming up with a new product called Darth from Darth Vader from Star Wars, which we will bring out next year. Uh, so, uh, and that would change everything. That would be a step forward. So, look, for us, it's continuously building new products. You know, we are like a technology in motion, coming up with new products. And, and I told you, one thing you've got to give it to us is that we are coming up with products faster than anybody else. We are continuously coming to the market. And, you know, I appreciate your thumbs up. I think, you know, we are, we are, we are talking the talk, but we're also walking the talk, right? And then I think as you know us, as you get to see us more and more, um, there is no stone unturned. Uh, there is, I am even in this pandemic moving globally to build alliances, um, you know, whether it be in the Middle East, uh, we're going to do something very big in Africa. We will announce in the next uh, you know, few months, uh, because I think Africa is crying out same thing for products like this. So I'm, you know, for us, I'm looking to truly build, Nitin Karkariji talks about, Honorable Minister talks about building India as a number one electric desti you know, destination. I am of that belief that we should work towards it. It doesn't happen overnight, but we are continuously as a company, as, an, as a team, and this is for me. I'm just the I'm just the face on the on the TV or the newspaper. It's my team. It's the R&D team. It's the marketing team. It's the is the is the re, you know it's the, it's the PR team. It's the digital team. It's it's all the teams that are working with me on this journey. And all of these men and women that work with my, with us to make OSM and to be able to build this dream of building a a, a more greener India. In for me, the biggest thing of this journey is to make our future generation. Atulji, what we are forgetting, and I mentioned this to you earlier when you were there with us earlier, was that I am worried about our future generations. We have got our AQI indexes in our major cities. We are the worst polluted cities in this world. And I think we need to change it. I mean, you know, people are not thinking about it. People just think about how cheap costs. But our future generations are going to be in the hospitals uh, because we're breathing issues. So for me, being part of this green energy, being part of this revolution has a much more important meaning than just. And, and believe you me, I've got nothing wrong against all these IIT guys coming up with a vehicle and, and raising multiple hundred crores on valuations. For me, the payoff would be to be able to build a better, cleaner India. That is what's driving me every day to work on this mission. Very nice. I, I, <coughs> I hope... Uh... People like uh, you are showing the way forward to our young IITians that, you know, they can execute as fast as you can execute. I think we'll be a much better place much earlier. Okay. Uh, again, state, going back to the vehicle uh, statistics, uh, you know, one of the very interesting challenges or the advantages in terms of range improvement is the region, right? 
now uh, typically uh, you know there are a lot of region settings that need to be changed when you fully loaded vehicle versus an empty vehicle etc so what kind of algorithms are you using uh, as far as region is concerned is there something that's kind of gone into it or is it still work in progress or if, if you no no we have our any teams idea absolutely, absolutely atul ji very good question our teams um, you know specifically my r&d head uh, kartik garu and his young guns are always working on it we have aligned with a group of very a uh, superb uh, korean i i can't because of ndas i cannot name everybody uh, in 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 a, in a, in a you know in a podcast but they are working with a group of very very advanced uh korean engineers on the region setting uh we are using at the moment 15% region setting on this vehicle uh we will continually work on improving for us it is not just as i said it's not a sprint it's a marathon our teams will continually work and again how atil ji that happens is having alliances with international players whether it be the koreans or the japanese or you know the europeans we've worked already in m1k on uh, with the italians on the design we have worked i'm we are working on the power train with the koreans we are working on the region setting so it's a, it's a, it's a really truly an international uh, group but make in india we again and again say to all of our partners everything has to be coming to india we will uh, you know we are not interested in just buying products from you and assembling it has to be a make in india so everybody we work with everybody we align with it's clear they have to come here and they have to work with us here in india okay one more uh, product design related question uh, it's about the gearbox so you have a you know a lot of electric vehicle that we have uh, use so far are kind of you know simply using on electrical electronics for kind of your gear selection uh, you want for a five speed uh, manual gearbox so again the philosophy in that see we felt as you talked about you know um you know the conditions up in you know you talked about shimla you talked about in the mountains you talked about we felt that the combination would give us for indian conditions better bang for the buck and we felt that the drivers and the and the vehicle efficiency and the overall economics of the vehicle would be better safety would be better so we worked as a whole package we looked at it again and i thought it's a continuous process as i talked to you before on giving us our customers a great product a product that they can actually use um which it will not be such a drastic change for them but also will give them safety efficiency quality and a long 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 term life okay uh moving back to the battery and especially your uh, 90k wh battery pack which is which is the one which is kind of you know got a lot of questions coming into our mind on uh so uh you know i don't think it would be feasible for you to get an overnight charge with a normal 15 ampere plug so will the owner be expected to install a fast charger at home along with the vehicle what what we're going to do atul ji is we are going to make sure wherever you know we have a significant pool of these vehicles that there's enough fast chargers again we have talked to akshay and akshay has promised us wherever we have vehicles they will install fast chargers to be able to give them uh you know to be able to give them that juice today i just read uh and it is already being proved in the US 100 km fast charging is happening in 3 minutes right i'm not saying that you know the cost will be different for US versus here but what we are working on is making sure that there is an entire ecosystem so our customers have that fast charging capability in all the regions so you know you know if if it was a hub for 5 or 10 vehicles we would put the fast charging in a central area where they would be able to do this continuously we will work on locations if once we want to we do want to do intra city also so we will put it up in locations see part of atulji this business is not being an oem it is about building the ecosystem and why is china so ahead of us in the electric because they have the ecosystem we need to work on building the ecosystem and whether it is for the three wheelers the two wheelers or four wheelers we all have to figure out what's the best way and this is something that we are aligning now more and more uh with companies like log9 we are going to make another announcement i can share with a very significant player that is got 
basically facilities across this country in the retail space that we have done something with that we're putting charges everywhere. So we are not just thinking about putting vehicles out, we're working on building, putting the charges in all of the locations where vehicles are operating. See, in the retail sector for electric vehicles, 95% uh, of charging happens at home and in office. And I think uh, we reviewed the Jaguar I-PACE uh, a few months ago. And, and one of the similarities between your vehicle and the Jaguar is the battery size. Both of them are 90 kWh. And I believe the Jaguar installs a 7.7 kW charger uh, at home for you. So the logic being that you should be roughly be able to, on an overnight charge, be able to do a full charge. You know, so that, you know, you get the whole day to yourself. Of course, fast charges will be available. So maybe that's one thing which I could suggest you could look at the 7.7 kW charger being fitted into, you know, especially for the uh, bigger range batteries. For the smaller ones, I think uh, 15 ampere kind of a socket like the Nexon, for example, 30 kW uh, overnight charging is perfect for the Nexon. Right? But that, the limit is about 30 kW. Beyond that, you can't get anything out of a 15 ampere kind of a thing. And then, of course, you could look at the three-phase uh, outlets kind of a thing for fast charging. I, I know one manufacturer who's done that, but I think we'll leave that for some other time. So... Um, no, no, I think, I think, I think your, your comments are very well taken. We, we, you know, that's why we love talking to you because, you know, you gave us a lot of input. Um, I think, yes, uh, you know, the 7.7 .7 that you're talking about, we will, uh, you know, we will look at that. I think that is a good suggestion. Um, I think overall, whatever makes this electric revolution uh, move faster, we will do it. We are working with multiple battery players, as you have known. Uh, we are working with a quite a large amount of alliances to get charging a very large part of uh, the ecosystem of this country. Right. So I, last question, which, which I am sure uh, a lot of uh, our uh, buyers would be interested in knowing is that the government has a very heavy subsidy on batteries. Uh, I think it's like a few 10,000 per kWh or something like that. And uh, you're planning to launch one of the biggest batteries in the country. So uh, A, have you applied for claim subsidy? And in case you do get claim subsidy, uh, what kind of an on-road price range can we expect for your uh, cyber truck, the Desi cyber truck? Sure, sure, we will apply for payment subsidy. We are working through the process. We will pass on all the benefits of that FAPE subsidy to the customers, depending on the battery range, depending on the product, depending on the quality they want. Uh, I think it's going to be between 15 to 20, but I think with the subsidy, the subsidy is yet to be determined. Once that subsidy gets kicked back, the price will change in a very significant way. It is not clear right now, as we both know, right? So, but my promise to all of our customers is every last paisa we get from the subsidy will be returned to them because it's duly theirs. Um, and I think the lower the price, the better. For me, if you looked at the efficiency, if you looked at the cost, and if I can give you a competitive pricing, which I think I will, I think that story of uh, IC engine is over. I've already said that many, many times. All the big boys and the girls in this business, their business is going to have to change. And I and I said this before: change with the time, or time will change you. So that's what I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. And I think uh, Ubeji, if you can hit the 10, 12 lakh price band post subsidy and offer the 250 kilometers range in that, you got a killer on your hands. Uh, best wishes from Team Plug in India for your uh, vehicle. And we look forward to laying our hands on it and giving you some more feedback about it. Thank you very much for joining us in this show. Thank you very much. And I hope to see you again. We will we will showcase the vehicle and we will work on the pricing and we will take your, your inputs up. Very, very important. You are the face of um, you know, the customers, you speak to all the people, the drivers, the last mile players. So taking your input is extremely important. And thank you, Atulji, for your time. And I appreciate it.